Hello and welcome back to Bionic Heart 2. All I'm good at is seducing men and killing people, it seems. And for what I know now, that's just what I've been doing back then, too. <sighs> I must stop thinking about that stuff. It's only depressing me, but what else can I do while I'm stuck here? All I can do is bide my time and wait for the right moment to soon see. <clears throat> Soon see that my way of handling things is very much superior to yours, Mark. Oh, that sounds as though something's going on down in the lab again. Oh, of course, you have every right to do as you want, sir. However, considering the considerable investments we've put into each device candidate... Ah, bah. It's just a little money. We're going for the big money. Not to mention the ethical responsibility we have for each of them. Which is exactly why I will be taking care of this, as I should have from the beginning. Now go ahead and plug him in. Yes, sir. Plug him in? Activating the link. This is Richard Mayer the Fourth speaking. Can you hear me, Walker? That is Dr. Walker, you imbecile. Dr. Lucas Walker. I know who you are, Walker, but you don't seem to understand the situation you're in. Oh, I understand what you'll be doing perfectly well. Your goons abducted me, and that sorry excuse for a scientist named Christovac took my brain out and put it in a jar. It's not a jar, it's a mare egg. Encephalic Oh, forget it. My grandfather <laughs> even called it a brain jar. What do you think? It's. That word is. Hang on, let me think about this. Encephalostagma? Encephalostagma means you ah I wouldn't talk like that if I were you oh indeed believe me if you were a brain in a jar you wouldn't have much sympathy left for other people damn it Walker you are in our hands don't you understand that I understand that perfectly well then why are you still refusing to help us after all this time because you put my brain into a goddamn jar you imbecile I will never help you or any of these clowns that you command I told you, sir. It's no use trying to talk to him. He, um, he isn't cooperative. Do you understand that we could just let you sit in there for a century if we wanted to? Oh, marvelous. Threaten me with the fact that you will die before I do. Really a high sign of intelligence. The fact that you're going to be all alone forever doesn't concern you? I find that hard to believe. I've always preferred the company of myself. In fact, in these last few months have been quite relaxing for me. I don't mind a little vacation. You realize we could kill you on the spot if we wanted to, or just wipe your brain. Of course you could, but the fact you haven't already proves to me that I'm worth more to you with my brain functions intact. Only if we still think you're of any worth to us, and you've done a good job of convincing Mark here of the opposite. Give me a reason why I wish you'd keep you alive. Give me any reason why we shouldn't just kill you now. Can't think of one, sorry. You wouldn't mind if we killed you? Sure, I'd die. But I'd have the satisfaction of denying you what you really wanted. Good enough for me. You see, sir, it's no use. Threats don't work. We must find something we can offer him. Bah, I know how to make this guy cooperate. Really? That I'd like to see. Mark, plug the other one in as well. Sir, are you sure? This will be the first time we... Plug her in. Okay, okay. Having trouble getting even your goods to do what you want? Sometimes they just need to remind it who's in charge. Activated the link. And now? What's supposed to happen now? Lucas? Lucas, is that you? Eleanor? Oh god, Lucas. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, it's so dark in here. Eleanor. So that voice must belong to Lucas Walker's wife. Relax, Eleanor. There's no reason to worry. But Lucas. Oh god, Lucas. I I can't feel my legs. I I think I might be hurt. Uh, it's, it's nothing bad. Do you remember Mr. Mayor? Yes. We're both his guests right now. Exactly, Eldor. You're both just enjoying my hospitality. Oh, all right then. Could you, uh, could you please turn on the lights, though? I'm afraid that's not possible, Eldor. Unfortunately, your husband keeps refusing to help me out with the little problem that I have. Oh. To be more precise, I'm refusing, Mr. Mayor. To I'm refusing to help Mr. Mayor steal everything I created throughout the last five years. Oh. I suppose you know now what I'm going to do, Eleanor. 
No. I'm asking you to convince your husband about changing his opinion about me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Man, that's pathetic. Asking my wife of all people. Lucas, I, I don't understand. Eleanor, honey, Mr. Mayor is threatening to harm you if I don't do what he wants. What? But... Shh, don't worry, honey. Of course it's not going to work. Oh, really? You think I will be above that? No, of course not. You're the lowest of the low. You're above nothing. Oh, God, honey, I'm scared. And you should be, Eleanor. I'm losing patience with your husband. You better start being convincing really soon. Mia, you're such a moron. Do you really think this will work? Please, dear, please stop that. Please stop insulting him. It sounds as though he's serious about... Of course he's serious about that, honey, but he keeps making the wrong assumptions. Oh, and what assumptions would that be? That I would care about what happens to Eleanor, for example. But, but Lucas, what are you... Honey, shut up while the men are talking, would you kindly? But... but... Good heavens, what is this guy saying? You... you're, you're saying you don't love your wife? The woman you married? Of course not, why would I love someone from here? Lucas, you... Honey, stop whining now, you're upsetting me. But, look, I... then why... I needed a test subject for my current research. Something to try out whether I did a good job or not. I can't have anyone important dying if I make a mistake. You needed her... as a test subject? Exactly. No, Lucas, but... but oh, it can't be, why? Oh, for the last time, Eleanor, stop whining! Oh, the situation is bad enough as it is. So you wouldn't care if I just put a bullet through your wife's brain now? What? Of course I don't. Certainly won't make me reconsider my stance on doing business with you. Lucas. Oh God, Lucas, please. No, it can't be true. You think I'm not going to do it? No, I don't think you're going. No, I don't think you're going to do it. Because you won't profit in any way from doing it. You can't threaten me with Eleanor's death, so you have nothing to gain from killing her. Which is why... <laughs> A shot, and the sound of shattering glass. Mia must have... Goodness, sir! Never underestimate me, Walker. Never underestimate what I'm willing to do. And obviously never underestimate your lack of imagination. Eh? Huh? You haven't even tried what happens if you torture Eleanor to make me listen to her screams. It's not as though I can hold my ears shut anymore. Or can I? You mean... No, that wouldn't have worked either. I've seen too many lab rats die in painful seizures that the suffering another won't affect me that much. But I'm a little disappointed you even didn't you didn't even try to break me with that. I would have. God, that guy's an even, even bigger asshole than me. Well, at least you've given me a nice idea, Mark. Sir? Find out what kind of music our guest here hates, and then play him that music. All the time. <sighs> It must suck to have a boss like that one, eh, Christovac? And soon you'll learn the full extent of my mental capacities, Walker. Don't worry. I'll think of a few things for you. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Footsteps. And then the sound of a door closing. Apparently Mir and Mark are both gone now. Hmm. Lucas Walker. Or rather his brain down here with me. An absolute bastard from what I know, but he hates Mir as much as I do. And what's more, it's in almost the same situation as I am. Could this help me escape from here somehow? So yes, it feels like we're building to a climax here, doesn't it? Wow, wow! Okay, this place is impressive. It is. Bigger than, any th bigger than anything I've even heard of on Earth. But why is it so empty? Because there are hardly enough people to fill it on the entire planet. What? Think about it, Helen. There can't be more than a few thousand people on Mars, right? Yeah, probably. This place is big enough for a few ten thousand people. These Martians sure think big. But why? It just doesn't make sense to build an institution like this for so few people. I think it's because they need these things to assure themselves of their own grandeur, to prove they're better than Earthlings. But nobody from Earth even knows it exists. Well, not can the three of us, of course, but... Welcome back, Dr. Walker. Yeah! I am so sorry, madam. I was programmed not to startle people. I shall have that program inspected at once. No, wait, I need you around for a moment. Are you certain, Dr. Walker? In my damaged state, I may be the cause of more mistakes. 
I am confident you will function correctly. I need you to register my wife here as a new resident scientist. Identification, madam. Um, here. Thank you. Welcome to this facility, Mrs. Eleanor Walker. Uh, thanks. There are no entries about your scientific degrees in your identification. Which faculty will you be joining? She will assist me in my research. Affirmative. I will register as a personal assistant to Lucas Walker. Would you please look right into my eyes, madam? W what Would you please look right into my eyes, madam? Um, sure. Thank you. Would you please put your hands on my chest, madam? What? Would you please put your... I heard the first time, but... That should be her uh, saying that, shouldn't it? I heard you the first time, but why? I need to record your biometrical data, madam. Retinal image and handprints. Or do you prefer a DNA sample? Ah, no, a handprint will do fine. Here. Thank you, madam. Your biometrical data has been recorded. You are now registered as a resident scientist of the Hippocrates Research Center. Then that will be all. Have a nice day, doctor. Have a nice day, madam. Okay, now that it's gone... What the hell was that for? We needed to get into a place with a private terminal. And the doors there have biometric sensors. Ah, so that's why you wanted Helen around. Exactly. Elnor Walker only recently arrived on Mars, so our biometrical data hasn't been stored yet. Now it is. Clever. You could have told me that in advance. I told you I needed you to get inside. But you never said I had to touch a robot's breasts. I didn't exactly know that, Helen. Can we please get inside? I think the robots are starting to stare at us. Tom's right. We should get going. I lead the others into a large hall full of terminals that I went to last time, and then straight to the private booths. Any of these doors here, Helen? Alright, I'll try it. Helen puts her hand against the door and... Hey, it works! <laughs> and let's get inside, shall we? Tom heads straight in, and Helen and I follow. Yeah, it's pretty cramped in here. Comfortable space for a single person, not so comfortable with three people, I know. Ah, I don't mind, this'll work well. Tom immediately sits down on the terminal. Okay, so what exactly do you need me to do? I need you to hack into Sarah Master's account on the Hippocrates Research Servers, delete all her data on her virus. Ah, yes, so you expect me to hack into a computer network I don't know, running on tech I've never worked with, remain absolutely undetected, and break my way into a probably password-protected account containing secret data on a deadly virus that's intended to wipe out all mankind, and then delete all data on that virus. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okie dokie. Tom turns towards the terminal and begins to work. Helen just stares at him in amazement. He can do that? <laughs> I hope he can, that's why I brought him here. Uh, guys, one more thing. Yes, Tom? This may take a while. Why don't you go for a walk? Yeah, it's a good idea. What do you think, Helen? Would you like to see a little more of this place? Yeah, why not? We step outside the booth and leave Tom behind. I lead the way deeper into the Hippocrates Research Center. For a few minutes, we just walk side by side silently, and then... You know, I could get used to this place. Yeah? Yeah. Mars may be full of people who think nothing of destroying Earth, but... I've got to give them credit for their taste. I don't know. A little too... Monumental for me. Monumental, yes, but... In a timeless way, if you know what I mean. Something that looks as though it's already stood here for a long, long time. Hmm. Could be. A few more minutes of silence pass between us. And then Helen looks at me again. By the way, Luke, is it over now? Hmm? Once Tom manages to delete all that data, will you... I mean, you've had so much to worry about these last few days. Will you have... Will you have time for the two of us again? I smile and put my hands on Helen's shoulders. Of course I will, Helen. Oh, Luke... Must have been very hard on you, right? All that uncertainty, not knowing what I was doing, never having me around. But I promise that that'll be over now. If Tom is successful, then that is all over. Then I'll finally give you the attention you deserve. I'm sorry I haven't been able to recently. It's okay, Luke. It's okay. We hug, and Helen digs her fingers into the fabric of my neck. Just don't ever do that again, okay? <laughs> I promise. I promise. Things are going to start going very wrong, aren't they? Okay. Looks like they're all gone. Oh, they sure took their sweet time. 
Now let's have the camera still overlook me. This is going to be the shortest stealth mission ever. I move towards the grate at the end of the tunnel. Give it a good, hard push. It easily opens, and I drag it inside. Then I crawl out of the air-conditioning tunnels and into the laboratory. It's much smaller than the other one. More of a computer lab than anything. Back already, mate. You're quite terrible at sneaking, you know. It's as I thought. It left Lucas Walker's brain connected to the device that allows communication with him. Probably to make him feel more lonely. I'm not Mia, Lucas. Oh, another woman. What now? Is Mia planning to seduce me? Even though I don't actually have a body that could feel any arousal? My name is Tanya, Lucas, and I'm not with Mia. Yeah, of course you're not. That's why you're walking around in what I assume is a secret laboratory. Mia doesn't know I'm here. Ooh, now I understand. You're an agent from somewhere entirely else. You're trying to stop Mia and you're going to rescue me, right? Well, almost. Not going to work, Tanya. Hmm? Look, I'm not dumb. I know that Mayor's trying really hard to make me cooperate. He's tried persuasion, he's tried threats, he's tried blackmail. Now he's trying to make it look as though I'm being rescued, so I'm willing to share my secrets with you. Won't work. Lucas. It's not your fault, Tanya, really. It's that pitiful man and his constant attempts to outsmart me. The only thing that puzzles me is that he still hasn't learned his lesson. Lucas, I haven't come to rescue you. I've come to put an air to end to Mayor and his schemes. Makes no difference what story you tell me. I'm afraid you can't count on my assistance. Sorry. Mayor did the same as me to me as he did to you. He took out my brain. I've just as much reason to hate him as you do. So you're another of his device candidates then. Oh, what a nice story. It's not a story. Hanya, if it were true, then how would you be walking around? You don't see me sprouting new legs. Or do you? May I put my brain into a cybernetic body? That's why I can move. Ah, a cybernetic body. Must be a prototype of this BMF device he keeps bragging about. Listen, Lucas, I need your help. I need you to help me trick Mayor into making the mistake that allowed me to... Aren't your cybernetic ears working correctly, Tanya? What did I just tell you? Um, I told you that I'm not going to cooperate with you. No matter what your story may be, do you think I'd be lying? No, but you're obviously not believing me and I'm trying to convince you that I'm telling the truth. I'm afraid that will be quite impossible. In my current condition, I can't be sure who to trust, so logically I can trust... I cannot trust anyone. Ugh, this is going to be harder than I thought. Lucas, please, I don't have much time to... A pity, I have all the time in the world. Don't you want to go back? Back to Mars? In this condition? Oh, certainly not. How would I ever be a productive member of society? If Mayor was able to build me a cybernetic body, certainly your friends of Mars could do the same for you. Oh, they could, but why should they? Huh? Tanya, you have no idea what living on Mars really means, do you? Not really. It's the second best thing people could come up with. Now you've lost me. Fifteen years ago, 300 brilliant people and their families, my parents among them, decided to disappear from the face of the Earth and move to Mars. Why do you think they did that? Well because they were sick of living amongst all the other people on Earth? But what was their intention behind it, hmm? I don't know, to finally be free from these idiots here? No, 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 absolutely not. The original plan was to return after one, maybe two years. But then why leave? Well, the plan wasn't to leave, the plan was to disappear. Disappear? And then? Make everybody left behind realize how helpless they were without the people who disappeared. Help? I don't think I understand. Tanya, think back. Fifteen years ago, what was Earth like back then? No idea, I was a brain without a body at the time. Still that story? Okay, let's play this game of yours for a little while. Fifteen years ago, the climate changes on Earth could no longer be denied. Everybody saw the constant rain and everybody was suffering because of it. <coughs> I have no idea how a brain in a jar just coughed. <coughs> Scientists everywhere were discussing how to solve the situation, but no one had any idea how to safely change the climate back to how it was. Everybody was just offering ideas on how to live and prosper, even with the new situation. Hardly anybody tried to mend the mistakes that had been done in the past. Until John Randall revealed that he and his research team had made a breakthrough and could reliably change the weather. Who was John Randall? Of course you wouldn't know him. The governments of the world did their best to make people forget about him. What? Randall, by that time, one of the richest men in the world, had invested $900 billion of his own money into invest inventing this solution. Even today, that would be an insane amount of money, but even back then, it was even more so. 
I imagine his surprise when the governments demanded that he give them his invention free. Oh. They forbade him to make a profit from what he rightfully invented. They even denied him compensation for the years and money he invested. Really? They said it was his duty to make his invention available to everybody at no cost. That his, it was his duty to the world. That he shouldn't be allowed to profit from the misery of others. So he had been responsible for that misery. And when he refused, they came after him with the full authority they held. I mean, they took his technology from him. They tried to. They said their soldiers and their secret agents after him. Fortunately, Randall had friends, other industrialists. And together with them, he made a plan. To escape from Mars. More than that, to escape to Mars together and leave the governments of the world alone with their problems. Oh. The idea was that the greatest minds of their time would all at once disappear from the world, that everything would fall apart. Factories would close without people to direct them, universities would close without professors to teach in them, and there would be no solution for the climate change, so people would continue to suffer until it became unbearable to them. And then, the people from Mars would return and offer their help to their conditions. Ah, so they would all be welcomed back with open arms because of what they could offer. Yes, yes, very much like that, and more. They hoped that people would start to understand that they all depended on the brilliance and the spirit of a small elite and that they would therefore finally grant that elite their rightful place as leaders of the world. So, it was essentially a plan to achieve world domination. A plan to achieve world domination democratically, by making people realise that freely accepting this new leading class was their best option. Doesn't seem to have worked. Unfortunately not. John Randall, like my parents and everybody else, badly underestimated one human weakness. And that is... The willingness to put up with second-rate solutions. The what? Well, the best and brightest people were gone, right? Their ideas were gone, their factories closed, some were even destroyed. Earth was supposed to miss them. Instead, they allowed the second best people to take their places. The second best? Dumbasses like Mir, for example. Nanotech was one small tech lab 15 years ago, in the hands of a half-competent businessman and a second-rate researcher. But when the leading brand on the nanotechnology market suddenly was gone, Yes, who managed to drastically, drastically expand and become one of the largest corporations in the world. Nanotech. Exactly. Fifteen years ago, that place belonged to Walker Microparts, my father's company. I see. And that happened everywhere. The best players on the market disappeared, and who replaced them? Small fry who no one had even noticed before, because they had only been picking up the crumbs that fell off the table from the true giants. After two years, it had become obvious that Randall's plan had failed. If they returned to Earth, none of these ungrateful maggots would miss them. So they decided never to return. Yes, and to make Mars a better place than Earth, they secretly approached those on Earth who could contribute to their new society and help them escape. Of course, just making them disappear could have aroused suspicion, so they helped them fake their deaths so that they were no longer missed on Earth. And Mars did rise to greatness with that. We brought the best architects up so they designed a city unlike any other, the best engineers to build it. The best fashion designers, the best musicians, the best scientists, the best and brightest Earth out to offer, and they all joined us. No one on Earth cared because every time someone died, someone else, someone lesser, stepped up to fill his place. That's why you Earthlings have become accustomed to mediocrity. Maya is still mad that no one invited him to Mars, even though he found out about her colony there. But really, what does Mars have to gain from someone like him? The only interesting thing he has to offer is his behemoth device. That thing hasn't moved an inch since he built it, which makes it less than nothing. What is this behemoth device? Oh, Mir's bragged it's some kind of huge war machine, a super large humanoid robot powerful enough to replace an entire army. He says it's supposed to be controlled by a cybernetic link, but that's just bull. Why is that? Oh, there were tests with cyberlink vehicles in the 2060s. They all suffer from the same problem. The life support for the pilot is a huge weak point. A human who's fully cybernetically wired into a machine needs to be in a life support machine or his physical functions collapse. The only way it would work is if you managed to take only the brain of a pilot and wire it into the body of the vehicle. But that... Mia says he's been able to do that, but that puny crook would say anything to get me to cooperate with him, so I don't believe a word of it. But Lucas, he is able to do that. He's been doing that with me. Yeah, yeah, you've already claimed to be a cyborg, but where's the proof? I don't know. Is there anything you'd accept as proof? Hmm... No, nothing really comes to mind. But then how... That moment, the door opens. I suppress a curse and quickly dive behind a table. Oh, more visitors. I thought the entire point was to get me bored enough to cooperate. 
Quite the contrary, Dr. Walker. I bet that will convince Mr. Mayor that we've wasted enough time with you. Oh, so you're finally going to kill me? No, not yet. You may still be useful later. We do not waste great minds. <laughs> minds. I get it. So I'm going to disconnect you now, Dr. Walker. Lucas doesn't answer. But I can hear Mark doing something. Probably unplugged Lucas from that communication device. Can you hear me, Jason? Jason? What? Ah, uh, who? Ah, you can hear me. Hello. Who are you? Where am I? My name is Mark Christofiak. I'm the one who decoded your little device. Interesting technology, I must say. Where am I? Why is it so dark? Why can't I feel anything? Good questions, boy. And I'd like you to reflect a little on these questions. I'll return in an hour or so, and then we can talk. You... You haven't... No, you can't. Hmm? He took my brain out. He did the same thing to me as the others. I'm just a brain in a jar now. Very good, Jason. Very good. And next time, you're going to tell me all about that interesting virus. Virus? The one whose DNA secrets I found on your little device. What? I don't know anything about a virus. Of course. That's why you have all the data about it with you. Look, I have no idea how it got there. Maybe it was on my sister's computer. She's a biologist. I hacked her account for sport a few months ago. You'll have all the time in the world to tell me that later on. So long, Jason. No, no, don't leave me alone. Please, please don't leave me alone. I can hear Mark strolling towards the door and leaving. Mr. Christofiak! Mr. Christofiak, come back! Come back! Oh, goodness, the poor boy. Jason? What? Who? Who's? It's Tanya. Calm down. Tanya? Ah, oh, damn, just my luck. No need to worry. I'm fine. All I need is to find a way out of here, and to kick Mayor's ass doing that. Do you know how I could accomplish that? Well... Jason is quiet for a few moments. He's probably thinking. <sighs> Sorry. The only way I could help you was if I was able to connect to the security system, but... Yes? Um... Am I really nothing but a brain? I'm afraid so. Then... Well, then that's out of the question. Without some sort of interface, I cannot, I cannot hack computers. Then any idea how I could get you out of here? What's the point of getting out of here? I don't have a body any longer. I could find your body just like mine. A cyborg body. Yeah, right. So they're just lying around. He's right. The only cybernetic bodies out there are Julia's and mine. And I haven't got anything besides this body anyway. Jason. Yeah? Are there any other cybernetic bodies down here at Nanotech? Any other prototypes? I'm afraid not. Then you found two they built. One for you and one for a Julia Storm. Oh, crap. Looks like there really is no way to help Jason. Aside from giving him my own body or Julia's. And I have no idea how it would take out my own brain. Wait, what about... Jason? Hmm? Have you found any information on something called a Behemoth device? Behemoth device? Sure, that's the big-ass robot nanotech's hiding down here. Does it work? Well, in theory, yes. It's never actually been tested, though. Really? Why not? Because Mayor doesn't trust anybody with its controls. That thing's apparently too dangerous, even for a test run. Then why doesn't he control it himself? Because it was built to be controlled with one of these disembodied brains he collects. So it really is as Mayor told Lucas. In fact, from what I've read, he originally wanted you to pilot it. Me? Yeah, something about former serial killer not having any qualms about killing more people. So that's what he thinks about me. And he's saying the beer moth device is down here. Yeah, huge construction hall next to the power generators and the air conditioning. The air conditioning? That means I can get that by following the ducks back to their source. Now isn't that interesting? I wonder what would happen if I took a certain brain with me for that beer moth device and plugged it in. Okay. Lucas is potentially useful, but he's a colossal dick. And I actually do trust Jason, at least a bit. Thank you a lot, Jason. This has been very interesting. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to disconnect you right now. What? Oh, he sounds alarmed. Don't worry. If I understood that thing with the brains right, you'll fall asleep as soon as I disconnect you. Nothing will happen to you. You sure? I slept through a hundred years in that state without even noticing. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Okay. Good night, then. I carefully unplugged Jason's brain jar from the console it's in. Must be a magnetic lock. It takes a bit of strength to disconnect it. Back to the air conditioning it is, and then off to the BMOF device. And then we'll see how well it works with a pilot like this. Back to Tina. 
Right, that to me seems like a pretty good point to end this video and say thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next part.